I'm sure you must have taken a personality test at some point in your life. Have you ever wondered though whether you would get the same result if you took it tomorrow or maybe next week? What if your therapist or your teacher or your employer made an important decision based on that one result that came from that questionnaire? In psychology, consistency matters and that's where the concept of reliability comes in. So whether we're studying human emotions or memory or mental health diagnosis, if our tools don't produce repeatable and dependable results, how can we trust them? So let's explore what reliability truly means in psychological research and why it's absolutely essential to scientific credibility. We'll begin with the meaning of reliability. In simple terms, reliability refers to the consistency or repeatability of a measurement. So if we use the same method under the same conditions, we should get the same results. Imagine you're using a stopwatch in a psychological experiment. You assume it's accurate, but just in case, you take multiple measurements just to be sure. And that's not just good practice, it's an example of testing reliability. In scientific research, particularly in psychology, reliable results are those that can be replicated again and again across time, settings and observers. So if other researchers follow your methods exactly, they should be able to find the same patterns that you found. This replication validates your findings. Let's look at a few more examples actually. In a reaction time study, a digital timer is likely to be more reliable than a human with a stopwatch. A personality questionnaire that gives you different results every time you take it cannot be considered reliable. So in summary, reliability is the cornerstone of scientific research as it directly supports the testability and credibility of any hypothesis. Now we'll look at reliability and the repeatability of results. So when we say a test or an experiment is reliable, what we mean by that is that it is consistently producing the same result when repeated under identical conditions. Psychologists take multiple measurements and apply statistical analysis to confirm that this repeatability is occurring. For example, when testing memory recall across sessions, consistent performance across trials suggests that the method being used has good reliability. But not all forms of measurement are created equal. Mechanical tools like reaction time meter tend to have higher reliability. Human judgment is often less reliable because it is subject to mood, time of day and individual bias. Hence, experiments relying on subjective observation are considered inherently less reliable unless the safeguards are in place such as inter-rater reliability or clear rating criteria. There are several safeguards that we can use to make sure that the level of ambiguity is reduced there. Reliability as a component of validity is another topic that we should be looking at. A common misconception is that reliability alone is enough in research, but there's a catch actually. A test can be reliable but not valid. However, a test cannot be valid if it is not reliable. So the, what you understand from that is that reliability can be a given even when there is no validity, but validity cannot occur if there is no reliability. I'll explain this further. We can think of it like this. If there is a scale that you're using that's broken and it always shows that your weight is five kgs less than what you're actually weighing, it's very reliable because it consistently provides you the right result. The only thing is it's always five kg less than what your actual weight is. So it is reliable, but it's not valid because the figure that it's giving you is inaccurate. It's never the right weight that you have. So while the scale is reliable in producing the result that's five kgs less than your actual weight, it's not valid because it's not producing your actual weight and therefore cannot be used as a consistent measure. Thus reliability is a valid condition, is a necessary condition for validity, but it's not sufficient in itself. If you can't rely on your instrument to give you the same result, you definitely can't trust it to measure the right thing. Let's look at reliability. It's more of an estimation than an absolute measurement. When you talk about reliability, reliability is achieved through an estimation and not an absolute measurement. So it's important to understand that reliability is not directly measured. And that's why it has to be estimated. This is done using statistical tools such as test-retest correlation, split-half reliability, Cronbach's alpha, and inter-rater reliability, among several others. So all of these are different tests that you will learn as you go further in this topic. 
and also you will actually get to work with a lot of these when you're doing statistics as the next subject but you need to understand that when you get measurements the way you understand reliability is by estimating it using these different tools mathematical tools that helps in estimating whether there's a correlation whether there's a high correlation low correlation and this gives you an understanding on whether you're on the right track or not for instance if you create a scale to measure neuroticism a reliable instrument will give you similar scores for the same person across different points in time assuming that the trait hasn't changed in them now the higher the correlation between the scores from two administrations the more reliable the test is considered to be Let's look at some classical definitions of reliability now. Um, we'll look at how some influential scholars have defined reliability. We'll begin with Anastasi in 1957. So according to the psychologist Anne Anastasi, the reliability of a test refers to the consistency of scores obtained by an individual on different occasions or with different sets of equivalent items. So this definition actually highlights that whether you're using the same test again and again, which is the test retest, or you're using an alternate version of the test, which is maybe uh, parallel forms, that is two different forms with similar items in them, um, the individual score should remain more or less stable um, in the results. Then there's, of course, um, the definition by Stodola and Stodal in 1972. So they said that reliability is the correlation between two or more sets of scores of equivalent tests from the same group of individuals. So here the definition emphasizes that equivalent tools should yield strongly correlated results, showing that the tool is measuring consistently across forms. So when you're talking about equivalent um, tests, you're saying that let's say there's five addition um, questions, five multiplication questions and five division questions in a questionnaire. This is a very simple example and let's say that they are all the standard of a second grade child. They have to be. So if you do a 2 plus 2 equals 4 then you can expect and um, in another questionnaire you're putting a 3 plus 3 and you're expecting the answer 6. They're more or less of the same level even though the question is slightly different. So um, that's what you mean by an equivalent form. We are testing for the same thing, but the questions will be slightly different so that uh, it's not a repeat of the same questions. You're not testing for the same questions again, but the level of intensity and the level it, with which uh, the level of difficulty that the person will be going through when going through that particular test will be more or less the same. Now let's look at Guilford's um, definition in 1954. He focused more on the mathematical side of things and he said, reliability is the proportion of true variance in obtained test scores. So let's break that down. Every test score consists of true scores and errors. A highly reliable test has more true scores variance and less error variance. So this statistical viewpoint shows that reducing measurement error is the key to increasing reliability. Now let's take a look at the role of measurement error in reliability. In psychological research, error is inevitable, especially when you're dealing with complex human traits. But in this context, error does not mean mistake. It refers to uncontrollable factors that create inconsistency between the true score and the observed score. So let's say there's an additional factor that's making the score change. It's not really that you've done a mistake in measuring it, but there's some external influence that's causing the result to change. That could be um, what we call as an error. An example would be a person might score lower on a test because they were tired on that particular day and not because their actual ability has changed. Or you could have environmental distractions or ambiguous questions that may also introduce error. So the ultimate goal in psychological testing is to minimize error, estimate the magnitude of the error, and use statistical procedures to adjust for or account for the error that occurs. So reliability analysis is thus about detecting how much of the measurement reflects the actual trait and how much is just noise or error. In conclusion, reliability is at the heart of scientific credibility in psychology and it ensures that our observations are stable, consistent and repeatable, making them trustworthy. So what we've learned today is that reliability refers to the consistency of measurements across time and tools or observers. It is closely tied to but it's distinct from validity 
and we also looked at definitions from scholars like Anastasi and Stodola and Stodal and Guilford and they all remind us that reliability involves stability, correlation and minimized error. Most importantly, reliability is estimated, not directly measured, and must always be evaluated before drawing scientific conclusions. So if we want psychology to remain a respected science, we must start with reliable tools and continue to refine them.